Welcome back to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games and today we're going to play Strategic Command American Civil War. Now this is a war game that's published by Slither. Now when you click on the single player game you can pick between different campaigns. We're going to be playing the uh, blue and gray which is the first one and we're going to be playing on the side of the Union. I've already kind of prepped this and let's just go. I have been trying to record this game for like three times already and my computer just keeps bugging on every single thing it can. The game does not seem to have a tutorial but it has a super comprehensive manual except my computer doesn't show me pictures of the manual. Which sounds... who cares? You don't need the pictures well except they describe things like... In this picture you can see that the defender will take casualties of two and the attacker will take casualties of four. But even though if that's two, four or four, two because you can't see the picture so... This is, we're gonna call this a first look even though I looked at this game before because this is gonna be fun. Alright, uh, so here you can do some setups like how you wanna view these things like national colors, 3D units. You definitely want the messages and the last turn summaries and obviously fog of war, weather, that kind of thing. You can remove undo moves, but why not? And we'll keep everything the way it is. So let's just, you can also go into advanced, add some additional text if you wanted to, but we're just gonna keep it the way it is. Now, the, uh, we're doing the 1861 Blue and Grey, which is the very first sort of like campaign that you can take. There are, I think, six campaigns in the game, so there's quite a lot of it. The map is huge, guys. Like, it's insanely big. You're going to see it in a moment. It's just, wow. It's pretty great. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for this, but I don't know. This is like <laughs> so many times. Confederates Wombar's Fourth Summer. So the, we start off with the Confederate turn because I picked the Union instead of the Confederate, which was the basic uh, thing to go, so we have to wait. Confederates celebrate the succession of Virginia. Virginia secedes and joins the Confederacy. Maryland General Assembly votes against succession. The first. Anti-war Dermagas and Confederate sympathizers riot in Baltimore. Eh, not great. Actually, see, we're taking some damage there. President Lincoln issues a call for 75,000 volunteers. President Lincoln proclaims a blockade of the southern states. Okay. Confederates one more for summer, so we could actually click on these two things again if you wanted to, but we kind of already read it, so we're good. Okay. Welcome, Mr. President, to the American Civil War. At present, many of the border states may have not yet joined the war, and in coming terms, we can expect the succession of Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina. The situations in Missouri and Kentucky are less certain and can be influenced by diplomatic events and invasion. Victory in this war will depend on your ability to maintain the public's fighting spirit. So it is important to capture as much ground as possible, a special location marked as FS objective. The fighting spirit, if you get it down to less than 10%, then the opposite side loses. And if yours gets to the less than 10 percent you're dead and you can see it in the victory conditions when you pick the campaign if this is your first time playing we strongly recommend you to read through the game strategy guide we have provided some tips and tricks to help you plan your campaigns although we encourage you to try out your own strategies as well yeah mr president the enlistment of tens of thousand volunteers has placed unprecedented demand on our arsenals and our quartermaster reporting that the shortage of weapons is imminent as the prevor stocks are depleted while in the long term we expected increased production at our facilities in springfield ma to supply our forces mobilizing these resources will take time to alleviate these shortages our quartermasters have begun sourcing weapons and ammunition from markets in europe for the next 10 turns you will receive 200 mpps each turn as this equipment reaches our shores Secretary of War. The state of Missouri is deeply divided. Although much of the state's population seeks to remain neutral, Governor Jackson sympathizes with the rebel cause and may attempt to take his state out of the Union. In order to prevent Missouri's succession, we can order federal forces into the state to secure the St. Louis arsenal and then crush any secessionist militias that may be raised by Governor Jackson. This would ensure that Missouri joins the Union following the occupation of Jefferson City. Although a bold action will surely cause some alarm in the neutral state of Kentucky. If we keep our forces out of Missouri, 
the state will remain neutral until the state government votes on this issue or is invaded. As long as Missouri remains neutral, we will also receive grain shipments worth half of the state's MPP each turn. Would you like to order our forces to enter Missouri? Yes. So we're going to go with yes over here. Uh, the way this uh, the states work is quite interesting because essentially if you walk into a state before when it's neutral it will immediately jump to the other side because it's considered an invasion so the things you have to do is you have to kind of we're gonna see it with kentucky i think in a moment okay so they're concerned but uh, i think we're gonna be giving that to us very soon governor jackson raises per conferred missouri state guard okay um are we gonna talk about kentucky yet not yet okay not yet never mind um so the kentucky uh, what i was trying to say is that we're gonna have an event soon with kentucky where it's gonna tell us that we should uh, be ready to like go to kentucky but not go in otherwise they'll consider invasion and you have to go near the river and you have to wait and then when they get attacked by the confederates then they're immediately like oh my god we're getting attacked please help us and people are just oh it just happens to be so convenient that we are just there and they're right next to you let's go help you so that's i think that's really funny that we're just going to be standing on the border and be like let's just hang out we don't want anything and then they get attacked they're like oh i'm right here to save you no problem before the beginning of the rebellion, most of our small army was stationed at the various forts across the Western Territories. Although most of these gardens are located in areas far from rebel states and thus will play no part in this war, those located in the Indian Territory are under direct threat from militias operating from Texas. In order to prevent the likely destructions of these garrisons, we can evacuate them to Fort Levin Ward with the help of the local Indian warrior Black Beaver. This will ensure their safety, although the rebels will surely capture Fort Scop and Vashita, and make the Indian tribes much more likely to side with the rebels. Uh. Alternatively, if we order the garrison to maintain their positions, we will have a better chance to control the Indian territory and may be able to secure the help of some of the resident tribes. Note that if you order the garrison to remain, it will not be possible to move them until the Indian tribes have joined the war and they will require reinforcements to hold for any length of time afterwards. So if we evacuate them, they will be unhappy because we forced them to move, but we will save them. But they won't like us. Or we can just be like, you want to stay, stay. And then... They'll... It's kind of strange because like, we're saving them, but they're mad. Or we're not saving them and they're happy. So let's just not save them and keep them happy. That seems like a weird... It's like a, it feels like a weird choice, like... But I can't move my garrison. I'm not gonna move my... I mean, if you don't want me to help you, because if I help you, you'll side with the rebels. So just stay. If you don't want me to help, I'm not gonna help. Like, no. no. Yeah, like, you, you didn't... If you didn't want me, like, I'm not gonna put myself there. Okay, so we got some new units. Is there, are we not going to get the Kentucky conversation? Maybe we don't, because I said yes on the Missouri. Is that it? Maybe that's it. Oh, so we, now we have to place our units, by the way. So we can left-click to place, right-click to cancel. So we're going to place them uh, right into the capital, because why not? Uh, another one here, and another one there. And you can hover over here to see the strength supply of this unit and their remaining action points. Because we just put them in, they have no action points. No entrenchment and etc. But that's obvious. Oh, okay. This is the whole map. And you can just, like, I, I zoomed out, like, really far. But you can, like, really look at this map. This map is huge. <clears throat> Alright, so Ohio River. Where, uh, we've got Indiana. Kentucky right here. And, uh, okay. So this is... <clears throat> So, okay, so we, we didn't get the Kentucky conversation. I don't Maybe it's because I said yes on Missouri, but uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, so what you can do is you can kind of stand over here and be ready. And then when they get like invaded or whatever, then you'll be like, ah, I'm going to help you out over there. Okay, Missouri, Missouri. So it's like, yeah, we, we can't go in there yet because they technically haven't joined us just yet. But we do want to do that soon. So I want to show you a couple things. So first, we're going to go into the war map. So this is the big map. But here, and this is super important, is the convoy map. So you can see, uh, you can actually click on this to see the specific convoy. But what's really cool is that you can actually, like, blockade these different... Let me just click this. I don't know if it's on or off. 
I guess now it's on. We definitely want this on. I just yeah okay. Uh, so essentially what you can do is if you look at these warm-ups, you can look at these convoys, you can actually do like a, We can do a blockade so you can block the uh, Confederates convoys and that way you can just like make sure that they don't get the stuff that they want to get so So this is obviously our this is like Haiti to Union. So this is our so we can go there to sort of protect it uh, We have a bunch of ships. Where are all my ships? Let me just Okay, we have a ship here. Can't get super far. Go over here. I'm gonna kind of get ready to move down, try to maybe block some of their stuff. Do I have any ships that are like better positioned than this one? Does not look like it at the moment. No more ships over here. Okay. Uh, I think we're just gonna stay here. I don't think we're gonna go. Like, we actually can move these units, so we don't care. It's kind of weird because the army is like super uh, spaced out. It's just like. I mean, it's rather really obvious, but. What is this? This is a convoy. This is. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. So. So you got a cap so I'm gonna go to Fort Beaumont. Okay. A uh, couple more things I wanted to show you. So here you can see the different like the states and who what they're leaning towards. So you can see if they're also already like Missouri is currently Confederate, but we're trying to change that. And then Arkansas, and then you can see the other states like how are they leaning. And then you can also declare war straight up if you just want to like go in. Then you can go here into the purchase. So here you can buy new units. So we, it costs us MPPs. We currently have 200 MPPs. So I could buy one brigade or what else can I buy? Balloons, <laughs> frigates. Oh, I could buy a frigate. That actually might be pretty useful. Uh, but we'll see. But if you want to use the the MPPs for other things. Here you can see Diplomacy. So the way this works with Diplomacy is that uh, it costs the MPPs again. And you can, so for example, they are, Kentucky is 10% leaning towards the Union. So I can invest in this and I need to purchase uh, chits that I use. And then I have like a chance to increase this per turn to sort of increase my uh, Diplomacy and try to make it better. Yeah. So, so we're trying to work. We could also try to work on somebody that's like really close to like wanting us. Like one of these. But now nah, I'm going to stick to Kentucky here. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Just try to work on them slowly. All right. Here in research. So research is kind of interesting. There are two types of research. There's essentially manual, which is if you want to like upgrade a specific uh, unit. And then you have like automatic, which is what you see over here. And that's, for example, I can put um, stuff into, for example, here I have a naval tactic. So each level of naval tactic increases the MPP loss inflicted by raiding ships. All naval units also receive plus 10% unit morale. I can focus on spying and intelligence, logistics. And here you can see the description of what exactly that does. Okay, so we have, we have some available. So let's put more into... Let's still more into na naval tactics. Oh, we don't have enough funds? Oh, it costs, okay. Cost way more, okay, never mind. And here we can see the reports, losses, graphs. We don't have any losses yet, but yeah. Okay, how many cities, who has, and so on. So, let me just, I keep zooming out too much. It's, it's a little difficult, oh, I, I clicked on Showing supply, we don't need to see supply right now. So I'm just gonna click that. Can hide and show upgradable units. So for example, you could click over here and you can see that this is upgradable. 
You can also right click on a unit and uh, click on like rail move or like a special type of transport, long range and etc. Forced march and other things. And you can check properties in brigade. This is especially interesting with ships, for example, if I could get, get to them again. Uh, let me just get this slowly. All right, so here we can see some enemy uh, ports and also presumably some possible uh, blockades that we could do with our own ships. So let me just grab more of these ships that we have. Could we move any more of them down there? Do I need to stay here to get my uh, to protect my convoy? I probably should, but I'm gonna move down because I'm gonna start doing some blockades here. There was a way to show like better tips. I don't know if I can see that. So the the way this works is that you can see like a convoy and you might be able to like there's like this um question marks and you can click on it and it will tell you information like if you stand there you will block it and etc. These uh, arrows by the way are a way to sort of speed up your um your movement. If you walk through this you're gonna be able to move faster. Yeah I process I don't I don't know how to turn on the, the tips. I know it's possible because I've seen other people do it, but I don't know why I can't do it. I know they want to stay here if you want to start moving closer to to Kentucky over here. I mean, I guess maybe we'll just move in. Doesn't seem like they're upset about us moving in so far, but we don't, <laughs> we don't want to make them mad. <laughs> I mean, wait, they're already with the Confederates, so it doesn't matter. We're trying to get them to join us slowly, but... Yeah, we already moved here. And this is a Union Convoy, not a Confederate one. So if I get on that... I think we just wait to see what the enemy does. Uh, let's just end the turn here. And we can't do any research, so we just gotta wait on that. Yeah, Confederate's still celebrating the succession after this, so yeah. That's like yesterday's news, I don't know why you're so excited. Uh, oh, North Carolina, okay. Pro Union Missouri volunteers join Lightning Forces near St. Louis. Ooh, that's great. So you get a new unit. Ooh, and that's a lot of units. Uh, Benjamin Buffett's armor train helps the Union quell unrest in Baltimore. Ooh, okay. The Provisional Army of the Confederate States begins organizing. That's not good. President Lincoln calls for Union volunteers to serve three-year terms. Okay. You get 664 MPP. So this is depending, again, on the territories that we have and on the importance of foreign weapons. So we can use this to do a lot of cool stuff. And, yeah. Like I said, this is... I don't know if I said this, but I will consider this a first look. I'm not alive. And we got to wait for stuff to happen. Great Britain extends belligerent status to the Confederacy. Ooh, that's not good. In response to the blockade. I haven't done a blockade. The capture of New Orleans, the largest city in the south and the gateway to the Mississippi River would significantly improve our chances of defeating the Southern Rebellion. To accomplish this, some of our commanders are proposing that we send an amphibious force escorted by river gunboats up the river to occupy the city. While our coastal gunboats are capable of sailing into the Mississippi directly from the Gulf of Mexico, a greater logistical effort will be required to deploy more powerful river craft, particularly riven ironclads in the Southern Mississippi. Should you wish to send such warships to the river, the Navy asks that you move them to the Mark Hex in near New York. The Navy will then automatically arrange for a larger ship to escort the river boats to the mouth of Mississippi. Deploy river warships in New York for use on the Mississippi River. Uh, so I, I don't know if you, if you caught that, but there was like a um, hex sort of showing it to us. The city of New Orleans is extremely vulnerable after a campaign up the Mississippi River. Situated merely a few feet above the sea level, the city relies on a system of leaves and dikes to protect it from fluid waters. In the I've never heard of this word. I don't know what that means, but okay. In the event that our gunboats are able to sail up the river to the mark location at the city's edge, these defenses would be within range of our guns. While our analysts are still determining the likely effects of their discussion, it's likely that flooding New Orleans would have catastrophic effect upon the strength of the city's garrison. 
Fortunately, the effect of such an attack would only be temporary, and if we did not then move to quickly occupy the city, the rebels would surely reinforce the garrison. So they don't want us to bombard the leaves of New Orleans. Unless we have enough amphibious transport. He will be offered a decision event at the beginning of the first turn in which a Union warship occupies Hex 96-128, which may only be accepted or denied once. If you attempt to destroy the New Orleans leaves, do not move any warships into this location until you are ready to launch the attack. Okay. So now we get our ships. Finally. I, I just want to do a blockade. <laughs> so I want to show you. Uh, wait, where can I... Why, did, why aren't you showing me where I can place these guys? Uh... Oh, this isn't good. Oh, here. Good, 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 good. Okay. So grab my... Yeah, so essentially... Oh, I can move that. So I could move these guys, and I could move to Hex 96, which is presumably this one. But if I do that, I will absolutely block. Now, this is... All... I think that this is... Uh, okay, so we, we actually can go here. I can I think I can show this and I'll set this up to a raider mode and they should I believe occupy this thing, but it, it, it doesn't show me the tip so what I saw other people do and I'm, I know that you can make this happen I just don't know how is you can oh no, this is a union thing Oh, this is a union convoy, okay then I guess not. Um, anyway, it, the, the, there will be like a market that will show you how to click on this. I don't think we want to do that yet. Like, we don't... We want to go? We only have two ships. I feel like that's not enough <laughs> for what we want. Let's just move here. I feel like that's too soon to do the big thing. Can I move lower? No. Okay. Okay. What is this? See, so this is the confederacy. So we have to get down here to block that. It's gonna. It would have taken us a little while to get there. Let's. I can. I can start moving there, but it's gonna take us quite a few turns to get there. Now, where is? Wait. I need to go to. This is kind of so. It seems like we can move, but I don't know. Let me check the war map. Missouri. It says it's still Confederates. How's, how's Kentucky, by the way? It's still 10%, so we didn't actually get it to a better position in our diplomacy yet. I can keep trying. Yeah, what if I want to, like, spend, like, way more than this? Oh, so I see. So it's that's just a chance of success per turn, but it, uh, and it will increase it by 3%, presumably. I see. Or, I, I don't know how much it's going to increase, but it's going to increase the, the diplomacy somewhat. So now we have a 15% chance per turn. I don't know if we can actually walk through this. I feel like they're going to be mad. Yeah, enemy contact, okay. Okay, so here we can finally see our odds. Our odds are 1 to 1, so it's not going to be super helpful in what damage we do. But yeah, you can see our, our strength is 10, their strength is 5, but they have better and they have actually equal entrenchment now it looks that way. And they have 4 action points and we have 0 action points, but wait, we can... Now, there is can be only a difference of one from the predicted uh, stats. Um, I'm gonna keep moving through here. Um, let's just move like that. Oh, I don't know if that was the best choice, but okay. It's just gonna go straight into Missouri. They are with the Confederates anyway, so we're like, it's just gonna go to war. I was just gonna go at it. We'll leave Kentucky alone so they're not freaking out. We'll just focus on diplomacy there and we'll just go. Oh, I can actually go from both sides into Missouri. Interesting. Can't seem to go inside this place. So let's just. Let's just go. Should have joined us when you had the chance when I was being nice to you, Missouri. Now we're gonna occupy you. Because. You didn't do what you were told, so 
whatever. <laughs> Let's just go. Um. Okay. This is, by the way, our HQ over here, so you can see like which unit uh, are related to that and etc. And yeah. I, I think I want to keep this unit up here just so we kind of we can see if they start sort of like moving from different areas outside or something. Uh, we're actually going to end the episode here. This was obviously just like a quick way to kind of show you how the game works. This is not like we're not doing like a long playthrough or something. It's just a very quickly just so you can see how this goes. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, write down in the comments and you can click on the right to watch some other game that you play on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye bye.